after. Federal officials are on the scene and they are looking into what caused a deadly plane crash at Columbus Metropolitan Airport. The plane went down just after 6 o'clock last night. NBC 38's Stephanie Tiso has more. Well, incidents like this don't happen very often at the Columbus Metropolitan Airport. And according to the National Transportation Safety Board website, the last time a plane crashed off of a runway at the Columbus Airport and resulted in fatalities was in 1985. As for Sunday night's crash, the first emergency response crews on the scene were a little atypical for an incident like this. Typically we're a, a, a secondary responder to the first responders and of course last night, us being right here at the scene of the incident, we were the, the first responders. We were summoned by one of the uh, pilots out here. They were so close that the yellow police tape is now just feet away from the air that headquarters. They're used to responding by helicopter, but this time, the on-shift pilot, nurse, and paramedic were able to simply run to the pilot's aid. They did render what, what aid they could until the... <coughs> Uh, fire and EMS did arrive. Despite effort, 63-year-old Gerald Edmonds was pronounced dead on the scene of the crash around 7 o'clock Sunday night. The Columbus doctor was practicing takeoffs and landing in what's called touch and goes when he apparently veered right and crashed into a tractor that was parked between two hangars. The plane Edmonds was flying was home built in 1994 and registered in his name. Pieces of fragmented plane still sat on the runway this morning. And according to the lead NTSB investigator, a crew picked up pieces of that wreckage this afternoon. While no one on the AirVac response team knew Edmund, Owen says they were shaken. We took him out of service for a short amount of time yesterday evening after the incident. A uh, little bit of, did a little bit of critical incident stress debriefing. Edmonds was a clinical psychologist at the Pastoral Institute. Neighbors say he lived in his Bayonne Drive home by himself and kept mostly to himself. But they do say that any time they saw him out in the yard, he was sure to greet them with a friendly smile and a hello. <coughs> For WLTV NBC 38 News, I'm Stephanie Tiso. Edmonds' body will be sent for an autopsy tomorrow. The field portion of the National Transportation Safety Board's investigation will take about a week to complete. The actual fact report on the crash will take between seven and nine months. On to better news now. The weather is absolutely fantastic.